we saw that uh, if you neglect this term, the, the, the uh, equation you have to solve for a zero energy state, okay, which is, uh, um, so that's clearly a sub-gap state. That's a very low, low energy state below the gap of the bulk. That would be a, like a 1D Dirac equation um, with, a, with a, a mass, which is mu of r. Okay, so the, the mass change is signed. This is the famous uh, Jackie Berby problem. And uh, if the mass change is signed, necessarily you have a, a uh, zero energy a solution, which is localized close to this, to this boundary. Okay, so uh, you can say to, uh, to uh, zeroth order in, uh, in uh, one over R, one over capital R, which is basically the order of magnitude of this term, this uh, a boundary mode is exactly at zero energy, and its energy is independent of M, and, uh, and now we're going to find the uh, corrections of order 1 over r, okay? So, uh, and, and, and then uh, this, this, uh, uh, these modes are going to acquire some finite energy, okay? So, they're, in particular, they're going to acquire some m dependence, which means that they have a dispersion, okay? Their energy depends on their angular momentum. Um, so, uh, uh, right, so let's, let's do that, okay? And let me just uh, remind you that these terms, uh, uh, so these, uh, these zero modes, Okay, for any m, uh, what we found is that um, they're basically eigenstates of sigma x. Okay, you can, you can look at the notes that um, were posted or, or, or at your notes to see how that comes about. But the uh, zero modes are uh, uh, just uh, have, have f equals g or f equals minus g, depends on if you do it right. Okay, so um, uh, there are uh, eigenfunctions of uh, sigma x. So there's some, there's some uh, wave function. And uh, there's an eigenvalue that we call eta, okay, which is either plus or minus one. Okay, so uh, right, so now now uh, we, we can just do first order perturbation theory in the in the uh, a, in the one over r term. Um, so uh, right, so now, then we'll get uh, to first order e of m. A, okay, so that's going to be just the expectation value of the psi. A, a, a with this uh, term, okay? So uh, minus delta m plus half divided by r a psi naught okay, divided by the uh, normalization of this wave function. Okay, and uh, a, a, this, uh, this is a spinner, okay? This is a, a, a two-component spinner. So a, a, a you see that uh, the one over r term actually comes with a sigma x because it's just the same, same component here and there. Okay, so, uh, so this is very easy to do because this is an eigenfunction of sigma x. Okay, so, so it just gives us the eigenvalue, eta. And then, uh, um, right, and then it's just, uh, um, okay, so, so the, uh, a, 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 the energy is just going to be delta over capital R times this, uh, this number. Okay, times sine eta. Okay, so uh, uh, what does this look like? Okay, and, and m is some, some integer. So, uh, right, so it would look like this. So we have our a, 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 a edge modes. Okay, so there's a discrete spectrum of states in the, a, a, within the gap. It's discrete because the uh, perimeter of this disk is finite. Okay, so there's a quantization. It's, it's, uh, the the uh, it's a separation of levels is uh, a 1 over r. Okay, this is m equals 0. So for, for that, we get, uh, let's assume this, let's take this eta to be 1, otherwise just flip the sign. Okay, so uh, a, a for that, you, you'll get uh, delta over 2r. Okay, and then the uh, a next level for m equals 1, a, this would be over here. Okay, so this would be 3 delta over r. And then uh, for minus 1, you'll get a, a level here. Okay, this is minus delta over 2r. <coughs> And, uh, and so forth, minus uh, 3 delta over 2r. Okay, and that's going to be minus 2, and so forth. Okay, so there's a, there's a linear dispersion. Okay, the spectrum is discrete because the edge is finite. But you can sort of see what would happen to this in the thermodynamic limit. If you take r to be very large, this would just become a linear dispersion. Okay, and uh, a, the, there are two things to note. First of all, the dispersion has a, a particular sign. Okay, so these are chiral edge states. They move, they disperse only in one direction, okay, which is the eta. Okay, so they either move uh, yeah, this way or that way, and there's no mode moving the other way. Okay, and second, notice that uh, 
you miss zero here. Okay, so you, you actually don't have an a state exactly at zero energy. They, they, in the thermodynamic limit, all of these modes collapse. Uh, they, they, there's a finite density of states, they become a continuum, but there's no mode for any finite size. There's no mode exactly at zero energy. Okay, and, and uh, one other thing to note, okay, so these are solutions to the group of the Dijon equation. So as, as, as they have to, they always come in these pairs of E and minus E. Okay, so uh, the spectrum actually reflects this, uh, this uh, symmetry of the Hamiltonian. Okay, and then, uh, uh, right, so, so uh, um, what we're actually interested in is precisely uh, w uh, under what circumstances we'll have a single solution to this equation at exactly zero energy. Okay, so this, uh, this uh, solution would be our Majorana zero mode. Okay, it's a zero mode, it's a zero energy, and it has very special properties as we'll, we'll discuss. Okay, so, uh, um, um, uh, right, but, um, uh, by the way, this is, this, uh, this fact was pointed out uh, in the paper by uh, Reed and Green. It uh, doesn't. Uh, okay, they, they noted, uh, uh, they basically solved this problem and they noted uh, the following fact. Okay, so, so uh, what you need to do in order to uh, shift the spectrum by half a notch is uh, basically to change the boundary conditions for that these F and G satisfy. And uh, um, uh, here, um, there were periodic boundary conditions, but if they somehow had to satisfy anti-periodic boundary conditions, this would happen. Okay, so the whole spectrum would shift. So uh, 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 what happens uh, if you have a vortex actually in this uh, superconductor, okay, somewhere near, near the middle. So the phase of the superconductor would actually twist by two pi. And uh, uh, roughly what happens is that the uh, a fermionic modes would, would, uh, would feel a, a pi phase, a phase twist as a result. Okay, so they, they, you change your, their bound condition by, by pi. Okay, so let me uh, elaborate a little bit on how that happens. Uh, let me, uh, right, actually do it here. Okay, so uh, 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 what do we need to do? Okay, so what, what we do is we need to recall that um, uh, the uh, pairing term that we wrote, um, uh, we treated it uh, as given, okay, as we do in, in, the, in the mean field approximation, but the phase of the order parameter is actually a live degree of freedom in a, in a super, super conductor or, 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 or a, a, a super fluid. Uh, so we can consider uh, excitations of the system, which are basically uh, deformations of this phase field. And uh, in particular, it can have topological configurations. It can have a vortex, for instance. Okay, so uh, uh, we wrote, we assume that the phase of the order parameter is uniform, as, as uh, on average it would be in the in the ground state. Okay, so uh, uh, we, we wrote, uh, uh, recall that we wrote our uh, order parameter like this. Okay, plus permission conjugate. Okay, but this, uh, this delta in principle is a complex number. Let's write that as a, as a modulus times a phase. And uh, I, I, we want to allow this phase to depend on a, a position. Now, a, right, so a, there's a phase here, but you can wonder, well, where, where should I put this phase? Okay, so uh, this is a, a differential operator and it can act, we, we, once the phase depends on position, it can also act on the, on the phase. So the, the right way to do it is actually to put it symmetrically. A, okay, so D to R, a psi dagger R, a, there's some phase here. A, th this is the phase of the order parameter of phi. Okay, and I uh, a, need to put it like this. Okay, times uh, psi dagger a of R plus, uh, plus formation conjugate. Okay, the, the uh, reason I have to uh, put it in this particular form is the, uh, roughly the following. Remember how this comes into the Hamiltonian. Basically, uh, you can think about this thing as a matrix of R and R prime multiplying psi dagger R, psi dagger R prime. This uh, matrix, because of the anti-commutation uh, uh, relations, has to be an anti-symmetric matrix. And this basically tells you that you have to put it in this, in this way. Any other way would, basi uh, would basically be equal to this plus a term which, is, which vanishes. Okay, so, so uh, um, uh, what we want to do is basically consider a spatial configuration of this phi 
um, uh, which uh, corresponds to a twist by 2 pi. Okay, so if you go along any closed loop around the vortex, then uh, uh, the line integral over the uh, uh, gradient of this phase uh, is going to be equal to 2 pi. Okay, so uh, uh, basically what we're going to have is phi of r, r in theta, is uh, equal to theta. Okay, theta is the, uh, uh, the polar angle. A, a, okay, and the, the way that the, uh, this would uh, a modify this uh, bougalouba degen equation is basically you're just going to ne need to add um, a, to the pairing term. Okay, so you add here uh, e to the phi over 2, which is equal to theta over 2, a, e to the theta over 2, and, uh, and same thing here, a, e to the minus theta over 2. Um, right, I'm sorry, and, and let me step one, one, one let, let, let me go one step back. Okay, I, I, ha I have to be a little bit careful here. Uh, these M's came from uh, um, a, 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 I, a, I uh, d, d thetas, okay, so this is, um, a, this is I d theta, okay, and this is I d theta. A, there was uh, also an e to the i theta. Um, right, but that's, that I, that I uh, already got rid of when I uh, a redefined the f and g. Um, let's see. Uh, right, so uh, good question. Um, so, right, the way we got this was, um, right, so, uh, uh, yeah, there, 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 um, there were our, our, our factors of, uh, of e to the i theta um, in front here. Um, right, there was e to the i theta and e to the minus i theta. And, uh, um, um, and uh, right, but I, I but uh, but when I um, I uh, define these f and g, they 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 kind of absorb these factors. So uh, that that was for the original equation, but then I uh, I, I uh, define new new functions f and g, uh, yeah, which so were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, yeah, you're you're, you're right. If I if I go back to yeah, I mean the uh, um, let's see. If I if I go back to the uh, um, to the f to, to the uh, uh, to the theta derivatives here, I can uh, okay. So let, let me let me do that more slowly. Uh, 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 right. So so I I had u and v here. Okay. So this was just the uh, original equation. Uh, and I had, before I had also e to the i theta uh, and e to the i, um, e to the minus, uh, minus i theta here. Right, okay, so now, um, right, so, so now, now I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the same thing as I did before. Okay, but um, uh, let me do it such that I also uh, uh, actually absorb this factor of e to the i theta of 2. Okay, so that's that's going to be uh, a different from before. Okay, so so uh, basically, what I what I want to do is uh, bring again this. Uh, I mean, uh, a, I I want to get rid of all the theta dependence. Okay, so I can I can uh, um, define a, my uh, um, um, a, right. So so I'll do the same transformation. Uh, uh, right, so I want to do uh, e to the i m a uh, plus half theta f of r divided by root r and uh, uh, e to the i uh, m minus half 
theta f of g of r <laughs> divided by root of r. Okay, so uh, right. I mean, I, I'm not going to embarrass myself by trying to do it on, on, online, but if, if, you, if you choose it right, okay, so um, a, basically what, what happens is that uh, we, we got bef before m, m plus half, okay, and this uh, extra, a, 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 so, um, a, right, be careful about this. A, a, right, a, so let's see. Um, a, Yeah, no, 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 let, let, let me not do this. Um, yeah, so, so, um, 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 yeah, if I, if I, if I, if I, if I, if I define it like before, yeah, let me, let, let, let me not define it like that. Okay, I, I define it as before. What I'll get is that there's an extra half that would come from the uh, derivative of the e to the, the e to the i theta over two. Okay, so, so the important thing is that these f's, still satisfy periodic boundary conditions and not anti-periodic boundary conditions, which is a, a, what, I, what I need. Okay, so, so um, right, so, so uh, um, uh, after I, I uh, uh, um, insert this in, okay, the uh, a new equation that I'll get uh, for the f and g is just gonna be off by, by, uh, by, by a half relative to what I had before. Okay, so, so it's gonna have minus mu and mu Okay, and then uh, a delta dr, a, but now uh, I'm, I'm going to have minus m over r. Okay, and delta minus dr minus m over r instead of uh, a m plus half. Um, right, so uh, let's see. Um, right, so um, let's see. Um, um, Yeah, so there's there's one, yeah. I mean, it it it, it might be uh, where where you, where you yeah, right. So 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 it um, it I I'll, I'll I'll need to look this up. I, I, it might be that what you really need to do is uh, to define with the same angular momentum. So so what 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 what, what happens is that the extra. Yeah yeah. So that's that's right. That's right. So it, it could be that what I what I need here is an anti vortex. Make this work. So, so, so the, the uh, a, yeah. I mean, it, it might be that what what really happens here is the following. They they differ by they differed by one unit of angular momentum because there there was a, 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 a because the order parameter itself has angular momentum one, and now there's a vortex that kind of adds uh, that can cancel that. So, so then then they would have the same angular momentum. Yeah. Uh, right. Okay. Thanks for that. Um, right. But uh, a. Anyway, this half is going to remain half, okay, and uh, it's going to shift the uh, quantization of the uh, of of this uh, spectrum, okay. So, so uh, um, uh, the uh, uh, the spectrum of the new pro uh, problem with a single vortex is going to uh, actually uh, uh, look like this. Okay, so the the spectrum is still still going to be linear. But uh, a, a, a now, because of this shift, there's going to be a, a mode exactly at zero energy, okay, for any finite system. Yes? So, what do you mean by having the vertex divide the Right, so, so um, um, yeah, so what I, what I, what I uh, mean by adding a, a, a vertex is that I'm, I'm considering a phase configuration, right? So the, 
the, the phase is an actual degree of freedom. So I, I can consider a configuration where the phase actually twists as a function of space. Okay, and uh, um, uh, the, the, uh, the phase, um, uh, right, so I, I, uh, um, I want the phase as a function of uh, position uh, to be equal to, uh, probably what I need here is an anti-vertex, so equal to minus theta. Okay, so, so this is what I mean by, by, uh, by, uh, by a vertex function of r and theta. Okay, so, so uh, um, the phase of the order parameter is not, is not uniform in space anymore. Okay, it does this. Okay, and uh, why, why does it shift the, uh, a, a, the uh, a angular, a angular momentum by, by half? Well, um, um, right, so that's, that's the part I, I messed up here, but, uh, but morally what it does is uh, basically change the boundary condition because you change um, you you can uh, you can basically do a gauge transformation that that uh, uh, undoes this uh, uh, this phase twist, okay? But uh, but that would but that would come at the cost of changing the boundary condition for the for the for the fermions, okay? Roughly, th this is the phase of a Cooper pair, so that's twice the phase of the fermion. So if that that if you undo the twist of this by two pi, there's a twist by pi of the phase of uh, uh, of of the of the fermionic wave function, okay? These this is the this is the idea. Um, right. So, um, yeah. So, uh, right. It's definitely not an artifact. It's a very real effect. Um, okay. It's, it is a physical effect. Now, um, um, yeah. Now, is there a, is there a deep physical reason? Um, um, it's it's kind of a. a very general phenomenon that if you have a, a if if you have a um, topological defect in a topological phase that would uh, a, that, that would uh, a carry some some new kinds of zero mode and we'll actually see more examples of that, um, um, right? But uh, whether I can give you something more than that, um, um, right? Uh, yeah, let's let's take that for a fact for now, unless someone has, wants to comment. Uh, um, Right, maybe it's a fact of life that we need to get used to. Yeah. Um, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Right. So now, now physically, of course, this vortex can is really an excitation of the system. It's not. I, I treated it as, as if the vortex arises from a different Hamiltonian, but it really isn't. Okay, it's the same Hamiltonian. Uh, the uh, Hamiltonian we started from was actually U1 symmetric, so the phase is a degree of freedom. Okay, so this is a, some, some excitation of the system. It costs, it costs some, some energy, okay, but relative to that energy, there's a zero energy state. Okay, so, so yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so so the the uh, um, the uh, a non abelian particle in the Moray state has exactly this origin. Now that helps you to understand if you know the Moray state. Uh, uh, but uh, right, but but the, but these two are are are, are closely connected. This is true. Right, you can you can generate of these vortices. Yeah, definitely right. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think what uh, Flat is saying is that it it's doesn't have to be an excitation. It can be in the ground state if you apply a magnetic field, which is yeah, which is absolutely the case. Um, right. So so um, yeah. I mean, uh, okay. So so I'm of course going to make a big deal about the zero mode because that's the topic of this uh, talk. But unless there's uh, some other question. Uh, um, how does this affect the underlying particle at all? Uh, how, how does right right? I'm I'm, I'm going to talk about the consequences of that now. Okay, but but uh, notice for now that uh, this spectrum is still particle hole symmetric, right? So 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 uh, uh, the energy is still uh, symmetric around zero. Um, now um, 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 right. So so now it, it does tell you somehow that you can't go continuously between the two configurations without somehow. I mean, particle hole symmetry doesn't allow you to do that. 
the boundary conditions have to be either a periodic or anti-periodic. There's no other possibility. Okay. Yes. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll uh, come to that point right now. Yes. So would this, the similar situation happen if I had, I don't know, instead of E, I had D wave, and then this like M, E, you would make the M anyways, right? And now I put a vortex that's like, what, has two vortices. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, right. So, so uh, a, a, you you can you can get that, but then we'll need to worry about whether these zero modes are stable or not. Okay, and that's that's, that's the point I'm coming to now. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I mean, you you if you if you follow the same thing tr tr true, I think you're right. I think you will get um, you might get multiple zero modes, but but uh, I'll, ar I'll argue later that they're not, not going to be stable. Okay, so there's, there's, there's something special about this uh, zero mode, which is that it's going to be very stable. Right, right, yeah. So, so, so uh, that's, that's true. They, they are, they are, they, they, they are going um, uh, to be costly. Okay, in, in fact, the, uh, the energy of a vortex ex a excitation of such a disk would, be, would grow like log of the... Um, of, uh, of the of the radius, but but uh, this is a topological excitation. Okay, so it's uh, um, you um, a, you can't get rid of it very easily. Okay, so so uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a global deformation of the entire phase field, and it has this uh, topological winding number of the phase. So it can't decay into phase So so it's true. There are low energy phase fluctu phase uh, um, excitations. These are the Gaussian modes of the superfluid. But, uh, a, a, but the vortex excitation can't decay into those locally because it's a topological object. Okay, now, now uh, and then um, I can also uh, um, apply what uh, uh, Flat mentioned. I can apply a magnetic field, okay, or if it's a neutral system, I can rotate the system, and then this vortex would actually be the ground state. Okay, it's not an excited state anymore. Okay, so, so um, uh, right, so what, what is this uh, zero energy solution? Well, uh, uh, the first important observation is that uh, uh, such zero uh, energy solutions actually cannot appear in the system as a whole. Uh, they um, cannot appear uh, um, in uh, uh, isolation. So if I, find, if I find one of them, there has to be another one. Okay, and the, uh, uh, the argument for that is, uh, is actually very simple. Uh, so uh, the argument is just that uh, we started from an even dimensional problem. Remember that we started from a lattice Hamiltonian. That had uh, a 2n, it, it was a 2n by 2n matrix. Okay, or Hamiltonian was a 2n by 2n matrix. So um, um, uh, we have an even number of eigenvalues. And uh, we had this particle hole symmetry that relates any uh, uh, eigenvalue e to uh, another one at minus e. And it's a different one. Okay, it's, it's important that it's actually a different one. So, so uh, um, uh, sorry, it doesn't have to be a different one. Okay, it's just for, for, for any eigenvalue e, there must be a partner at minus e. Okay, so now if the total number is even, if you find one which is exactly at zero, there actually has to be another one exactly at zero. Okay, there's no way around that. Otherwise, there would be one, if, if, uh, if there's only one at zero, then there would be one at non-zero energy, which doesn't have a partner. Okay, so, so um, right, so this somehow means that uh, if we find a, a, a zero energy solution on the boundary in the, in the configuration that has a vortex here, there actually has to be another zero energy a, a, a mode somewhere. And where would that somewhere be? Okay, so uh, a, a anywhere in the bulk, far away from the vortex core. Okay, so the vortex has a core of size xi. A, anywhere in the bulk, you can say this uh, phase variation is slow. It's essentially uh, locally over length scale of psi. It's uniform, <coughs> so uh, the system is gapped. The only place where this uh, extra zero mode a, a, a actually appears is a, can be at, at the vortex core. Okay, so uh, uh, the picture is like this. We have one zero mode, which is extended over the entire um, uh, edge, okay, which, has, which is an uh, uh, angular momentum eigenstate. And there's another zero mode, which is actually localized at the, at the vortex core. Okay, now, now um, there's a more explicit way to do it, to, to, to see this fact that the, the vortex core must carry this uh, zero mode, okay, which is uh, just to consider the inverse of this picture. Okay, so suppose that the... Uh, 
interior of the disk was a trivial phase and uh, the exterior was a topological phase. Okay, we can basically solve the same problem just with the uh, inverse uh, profile of chemical potential. Okay, so now, now uh, uh, this, is, this is again an edge. It looks exactly the same actually. Uh, okay, the, the uh, chirality of the edge mode is, uh, is uh, opposite, but that doesn't matter. Okay, and then uh, if you uh, twist the phase by two pi around this hole, it, that's essentially the core of the vortex. Okay, and uh, you can repeat the same steps. Um, you'll find a zero mode. Now, uh, uh, we haven't quite solved it in the right limit, right? Because we've assumed that the radius of this hole is very large compared to the length scale xi, which is the length scale of the vortex core. Okay, but, uh, but then I'll just argue that, uh, well, we assume for a moment that it's very large, uh, that the, the core of the vortex is very large. Uh, we find the zero energy solution. And then uh, uh, imagine shrinking the core gradually. Uh, the spectrum has one zero mode and it's uh, symmetric around zero. The zero mode just can't move anywhere. Okay, so this uh, uh, the spectrum looks like this now. Okay, so this is energy. Uh, there's some states in the bulk and some states uh, uh, within the gap, the, the bulk gap, but there's one state exactly at zero locally at, uh, at the vortex core. If you uh, change the size of the core, for instance, these states can uh, deform around, but there's one, inter one state that has to be pinned exactly to zero because it can't move without having a partner. Okay, and where is the partner? There must be a partner. The partner is on, on the boundary. Okay, so somewhere this thing ends and it has a boundary, okay, the, the other zero mode is actually there. Right, so, so um, uh, what's, what's actually the vortex core? Okay, so if you think about uh, uh, the uh, uh, order parameter of the, of the vortex, okay, so, uh, 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 so this has an, uh, some, uh, some amplitude and a phase, Okay, and uh, this phase uh, in, a, in a vortex twists by, by 2 pi, say, by, by, uh, by a, a, a some multiple of 2 pi. Okay, so uh, a, to, to prevent the order parameter to be singular, the, the, uh, the order parameter actually has to vanish. Um, um, in, a, in a vortex core, the, the, the core of a vortex really is like a piece of normal metal. Okay, so that's um, a finite piece of normal metal that's like the trivial phase, essentially. Right. Can you change the microscopic system such that you will not have it? Um, not without closing the gap. Right. So that's that's what I want to argue now. Okay. So so uh, right. So 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 uh, the the question was, I solved the particular model and found these zero modes, but I'm, of course I'm I'm not claiming that these zero modes are a, a property of the particular model that I solved. I, I want to claim that they're much more general than that, and. Uh, um, uh, I really want to claim that these zero modes are a property of the phase, not of the uh, particular model. A more elementary question. So you said that there must be another one at the core. Yeah. So, you solve, so can you change the microscopic system such that you would keep it outside but not have it inside or the other way around? No, no. So, so these, these zero modes really have to come in pairs. That's, a, that's kind of a fundamental thing. So if, if they're uh, spatially separated, you can't, you can't get rid of one without... What's the argument? The argument Uh, no, it, it, it actually depends only on, on the uh, locality of the theory. Okay, so, so the, 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 the point is that um, um, I, I solve for the wave function of these zero modes and they're localized. Okay, so one of them is localized here and the other one is localized there. Uh, now, uh, there, there are two of them. So in principle, you say, well, I mean, uh, I change some microscopics and they can, they can shift around from zero energy. As long as they do that symmetrically, that's okay. But if they're, if they're much further apart than xi, than the, the, the uh, length scale of the theory, okay, they can't communicate. There's no, if I, if I change the microscopic model in any way, somewhere here, um, uh, the effect, the, the, the splitting is gonna be exponential in their distance. Okay, so that's, that's the key observation here. Okay, so this, this is also a way to argue why, um, basically, uh, you can't go from the trivial phase to the topological phase without closing the gap. Okay, because uh, if you had a vortex, it would have a zero mode. You can't get rid of that zero mode without it leaking all the way to its partner. Okay. Uh, based on yesterday's discussion, I thought that uh, the symmetry with the imposter uh, energy level should come in minus infinity. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, right. So, so I'll, I'll, I'll have to argue, and I'll do, do that later on, that this thing is even stable in the presence of interactions. Okay, that's, that's, a, bit, that's a little bit more subtle. Um, Yeah. That's right. Yeah. But now you say that okay, I have a zero energy level, and there should be another zero energy level. Yeah. But I could say that one of your zero modes are not real. Yeah. Right. So, so I mean, uh, they, they, um, um, there's, the, there's, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, that's true. That, that uh, symmetry, I, uh, um, I, I claimed is, was uh, a kind of an a, a artifact of the formalism. However, it still is true that as long as my Hamiltonian is quadratic, that symmetry is there. It's kind of intrinsic. I can't get rid of it. Okay, so, so it's, uh, you can say the argument goes both ways. It's, uh, it's not a real symmetry, so you would think maybe it's not so consequential. On the other hand, it's not a real symmetry. You can't break it either. <laughs> okay, so uh, um, yeah, so, so it, it, it actually does hide something. Uh, there, there, there is something uh, fundamental about it. But some, it's just fermion parity conservation. So, so, so there's, there's no, I mean, uh, this particle hole symmetry is really an artifact of using a quadratic Hamiltonian. If I added interactions, made it more generic, the thing that would remain is the fact that the fermion parity is conserved. Okay, Th that is a fundamental symmetry. Th that is a true symmetry. Sorry, can you repeat? Yes. Um, if you, right, so, so um, yeah, that's right, they're, they're, they're n, um, yeah, so, so uh, there, there, there will be n fermionic modes, and uh, um, one of them would be a zero mode. I'll, I'll actually, let, let me actually, uh, I'll, I'll, I'm going to get to this point. Uh, sorry, uh, so I understood the guy was saying that uh, you have two solutions, but they correspond to one physical degree. Yeah, 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 exactly. I'm, I'm, so I'm, I'm that's right, yeah. One degree of freedom in Hilbert space. Yeah. But uh, we can imagine just a situation when we have a real fermion in the center, Um, How can we exclude such a situation? Yeah, so so I, mean, I, I can I can I can have that. I mean, uh, I can I can have an actual fermion at, at some point, at the, say at the core of the vortex. But so um, 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 an a, a actual fermion. The thing is that an actual fermion, uh, sort of a complex fermion, generically is not a zero mode. I can I can lift it away from zero. Okay, so so uh, it's not going to be as stable as, as this. This is this is essentially like half a fermionic degree of freedom. So uh, a, a, this is, uh, yeah, let me actually, okay, let, let me proceed a little bit and then you, we, we can come back to, the, to this question. Okay, so, uh, right, so, so uh, a, a, the, the point is uh, the following, okay, so if you uh, go back to what the uh, solution of the uh, Bougnoub of Degen equation means, right, so we argued that we had a spectrum and uh, the spectrum was uh, symmetric ab a, 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 a about zero. Okay, so we had some uh, levels e1 to en, and then uh, a minus e1 to minus en. And we argued that the solutions at e and minus e are actually not independent. Okay, they're just uh, a, 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 the two parts of the same fermion. Okay, so we, we called the uh, corresponding I a fermionic eigenmode of this a, a, a energy f1 to fn. And then uh, a, a, the uh, a, a corresponding mode here is just F1 dagger to Fn dagger. Okay, but what, what this, uh, and, and we saw that uh, a, a, a F1 and F1 dagger were precisely related, the, the, the wave functions of these eigenmodes were precisely related by this so-called particle hole transformation. Okay, so they're not independent of each other, of course, there's just one, one is just the dagger of the other. Okay, so now a, a, a now we found that if, if we have a vertex, there are actually two modes exactly at zero. One of them a localized at the vertex core, and the other one localized at the uh, a, a, a boundary of the system. Okay, so uh, a, we'll call, we'll, we'll, we're going to call these two modes gamma one and gamma two. Okay, now a, the point is the following. Okay, so uh, a, first of all, from these two modes, we uh, a, these are these are uh, a, 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 um, 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 right, so basically, uh, if I ask what's gamma one 
dagger. Okay, so that's basically acting on the mode gamma one with the uh, a particle hole. Okay, so uh, we had this uh, matrix, okay, which was one, one, zero, zero times complex conjugation. Okay, and uh, there's the corresponding vector, a, a eigenvector to a, to a gamma one and a gamma two. Now, a, this matrix is actually local in space. Okay, so it can't mix gamma one and gamma two. Acting with this uh, with matrix on the wave function corresponding to, to gamma one should give us back something localized at the same same position. Okay, so this means that gamma one actually has to be equal to gamma one dagger. Okay, and same same thing for gamma two. Okay, so so uh, a right so so uh, sorry gamma one. So um, uh, these these modes are special in, that, in 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 having this property. Okay, so this is this is a defining property of Majorana zero modes. They are a, a actually Hermitian. Now a, a notice also that you you can actually define a a complex fermion f just by taking gamma one plus i gamma two. Okay, and uh, a, this is a proper complex fermion now. Okay, it doesn't have this property anymore because f dagger is not equal to f. Okay, because that just becomes gamma one minus i gamma two, and uh, a, this you can check actually would uh, satisfy a, the usual a, a fermionic commutation relations. Okay, so f and f dagger. This is one. Okay, so you can in uh, particular you can define a, uh, a, a um, occupation number of this uh, of this uh, fermion. Uh, so that's that's going to be zero or one. Okay. So basically, the consequence of have, having these two my, uh, Majorana zero modes is that uh, you have a a uh, ground state degeneracy of twofold. Okay. So you can form this uh, this complex fermion f dagger f that's like a two level system. Um, the way you go from from one state to the other. Okay. So you can label your ground states according to the uh, a, a eigenvalue of this operator. Call it n. Okay, so uh, if you have the state n equals zero, you can uh, go to the state n equals one by acting on that with f dagger. But uh, f dagger is a zero mode. Okay, so f dagger uh, actually uh, commutes with the Hamiltonian. It's, it's, uh, it has zero energy. So uh, uh, this means that if n equals zero is a, is, a, is a ground state, n equals one is a ground state as well. Okay, so uh, uh, you have these two zero modes. Um, the ground state overall is, is, is twofold degenerate. Okay, so uh, um, in the sense, every every one of these um, Majorana zero modes is uh, is actually like half a physical fermion. Okay, if you combine two of them together, they form one complex fermion, which, which is like a two-level system. Okay, and uh, 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 this is actually the interesting thing about this uh, degeneracy of the system. Okay, about this uh, ground state degeneracy. So. Uh, um, so uh, uh, the point is this: so there, there, there are two states. Okay, in the presence of a single vortex in the in the disk, there, there are two ground states, uh, which are given by this uh, occupation number. But uh, notice that this is this is actually a non-local operator. Okay, so uh, uh, um, uh, in what sense is this is this non-local? Well, it's the following sense. Okay, so I just uh, write this thing out. Okay, so what f physically what is this uh, occupation number? Okay, so so uh, eh, I'll just write it. Okay, so gamma um, eh, eh, gamma one minus i gamma two. Okay, times gamma one plus i gamma two. Okay, so uh, eh, gamma one eh, eh squared um, eh, is equal to one. Okay, and then uh, a gamma two squared a is uh, a, a, a also equals a, 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 a equals one. And then I have i gamma one gamma two. A, okay, from here, and a minus i gamma two gamma one, which uh, because these two operators anti-commute, that's uh, I can put here a two. Okay, so a, a, this is equal to one, and this is equal to one. So a, a uh, uh, this uh, uh, this operator is uh, actually uh, uh, just uh, this uh, constant I can uh, uh, essentially drop. This operator is just proportional to uh, uh, the product i gamma one times gamma two. Okay, so uh, since these two are actually localized in different 
positions, okay, so if I measure any, any local operator somewhere here, that's not gonna, uh, that's gonna have a very small overlap with this operator. Okay, and I, if I express it in terms of the eigenmodes of the system, so uh, that means that any local measurement somewhere far away from the vortex and, and um, uh, basically anywhere, okay, so it uh, doesn't matter, it can be also close to the vortex, uh, as long as it's uh, as, as the uh, vortex is far away from the boundary, that's not that's not going to that's hardly going to give me any uh, information about the value of gamma one times gamma two, okay? Which is basically the uh, occupation number of this fermion. So uh, what that really means is that there's a ground state degeneracy here, which is uh, non-local, okay? So that's a topological degeneracy. There's no local measurement that you can make that would actually give you information about uh, which of these two states you're in. Okay, and that's, that's, uh, that's kind of what makes this, uh, this uh, ground state degeneracy interesting. Yes? Uh, right, so, um, um, yeah, so, um, 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 yeah, the, the best way to do that is to check. Okay, so uh, uh, what, what you need to do is to say, um, I have a solution to the, to the BDG equation which is uh, its own um, particle hole partner, okay? So, so there's a solution that satisfies it. It's basically an eigenvalue uh, of this uh, C operator. And then I'll square it and see. Okay, <coughs> I'll put that to the note. It's kind of a technical point. Uh, yeah. Yes? So everything is, like, I mean, if I go back to the, say, the 70s, I could have done this with a polyacetylene ring with two D threads. Is it equivalent to what you're talking about? No, no. In what sense? Right, right. So, so, um, uh, right. So, so, um, 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 the, um, um, the sort of uh, simple-minded uh, model for a poly polyacetylene poly, uh, 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 molecule. If you put a domain wall, it would have this zero mode, but this zero mode is not stable. For instance, if you just change some parameter in the Hamiltonian locally, the zero mode would shift away from zero energy. Okay, so this is the first sense in which this is different. Okay, the, the, the second way it's different is that that zero mode is a complex fermion. Okay, so uh, um, it's a, it's a two-level system. That mode locally can be either occupied or not. I can measure locally its, its, uh, its occupation number. Here I cannot. With result presentation invariance, if I enforce the location symmetry, it cannot be shifted away. Um, right, right. That's right, but but uh, yeah. So so um, this one is not symmetry protected, yeah. right? Okay. Yes. So what actually happens then in the thermodynamic geometry if I take R to the infinity of the Now all these states which are actually discrete, apart from the zero energy state, all yeah. the way to collapse are completely right. So right. Actually, multiply these generators. The well, it's it's uh, yeah. There's a there's a finite density of states you can say, um, not per year unit area, but per unit length. Okay, so, so uh, the, the edge really becomes gapless. It's like a gapless mode. Okay, I, I wouldn't call that in, in a ground state degeneracy because these edge states disperse. Okay, so, uh, but, but there's a finite density of states. Okay. Uh, yeah, but then does this still work? I mean, can you still introduce Right, it? right. So, so um, I can do that for any finite system. For uh, a, an infinite system, you, you're, you're right, your intuition is right that Kind of the mode which is delocalized on the boundary kind of loses its meaning a little bit, um, right? Because it's, it's part of a continuum. I can't really talk about an isolated mode. But uh, however, the physics is local. So the, the one at the vortex is still there. Okay. No, I, 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 I that's, that's, that's right. So, but, but, I, but I still, um, uh, right. So, so um, there, there would be my edge state, that the edge state is gapless. And that's just it. Okay, so that's that's all I have. I, I can't really take so I'm I'm not taking the thermodynamic limit here because I uh, I can't really talk about the ground state degeneracy if if the uh, if the edge is gapless. Okay, uh, um, if you if you like working in the thermodynamic limit, which you're right, liking it, you can uh, put the system on a sphere. Okay, and then you can have two vortices <coughs> uh, and no edge state. The system is really gapped. Okay, and you would just have these two zero modes within the gap. Okay, there was a question there. So I get the point that if both my random both my random mode density living on the X, it would not be stable. Yes. But just like trying to understand from the derivation that you showed, how do we know that uh, not both would live on the X, for example? 
Yeah, so, so um, a, a, right, so, so, but, I've, but I've really solved the edge, found only, only one. Okay, so uh, if, if uh, it's true, I, I, if I find one, I, I always have to find another one, but I didn't find it on the edge. Okay, or, or if you, if you want to do it better, the better way to do it is really to consider an annulus like this. Okay, and you'll do it in, in uh, a, a annulus uh, geometry. So, so there's, this is trivial, topological, trivial again. Or just a hole, okay, just vacuum, the, the topological and vacuum. And you'll actually find two, okay, one in the inner and one on the other. Yes? Yeah, two questions. One is that in this case, it's not just the ground state that's the general trial, but all, all the eigenstates. That's true. That yes, that's true. So that, that property is not generic, okay? So that, that would go away if you have interactions. Or at least it's very hard to define it when you have, when you have interactions. Right, the, the um, a question was, um, a, here I'm stressing the fact that the ground state is doubly degenerate or approximately a doubly degenerate. A, 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 in fact, in the model I'm solving, all the spectrum is doubly degenerate, a, all, all the many body spectrum, okay? Because uh, for any state, I can make this argument. Whatever the uh, finite energy uh, quasi-particles are doing, I can always add one at zero energy and I would uh, remain at the same energy because it's a zero mode. A, this, this I'm not stressing so much because this is not, this is harder to define once I add interactions. Yeah, and another question that in the case when you don't have a vortex, yeah. you still have a, a state at zero energy, so it's not at, I mean, in the continuum limit. So if you go to, go to large systems, you would still have a zero yeah. energy state, yeah. but at yes. zero. Doesn't that seem to have a particle host magic partner somewhere? Or? Yeah, yeah, so, so I mean, this, this, uh, this, this whole story survives in, in, the, in the continuum limit. I, I, I can't use these arguments of counting modes then, but the particle hole symmetry is still there. I understand that in, in the case when you don't have a vortex, you still, if you go to large systems, you still cross the, the zero energy. No, but not exactly at zero. But why, why, why does that make the difference? Yeah, right, so, so, so here I've, I've, I've not actually used the lattice in anywhere in this, in this argument. Okay, so uh, w when I solve for the spectrum, I just use the quantization due to finite size. The, uh, okay, so the, this, this still holds in the no, continuum. Sorry, I didn't mean actually continuum limit, I meant like large system limit. Uh -huh. then the, and in that case, uh, you, you would draw the line for no vortex, Yeah. but that's still going to cross zero energy somewhere. Um, um, if, if there's no vortex, it's not going to cross zero, right? It's, it's going to be shifted away. <laughs> Uh, so, so it's, it's, it's going to approach zero like one over R, but it doesn't, th there's no mode exactly at zero. Uh, just imagine, for example, a straight line crossing uh, that is a boundary between two phases, and then R is exactly infinite. Right. And then you will have, then, then this argument holds. It yeah, is, yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's, that's like taking the limit R goes to infinity. Yes, exactly, but the, the, the limit will be exactly if you have just a straight line. Right, Maybe right. That, yeah, then, then the, the spectrum is just continuous, and I can't really talk about whether there's a state exactly somewhere or not. I just have to make the question, maybe there's a question that's still there. <laughs> All right, so, so um, a, right, so, so this, is, this is sort of a very explicit way to see uh, what topological degeneracy is and where it comes from, okay? So, so uh, a, this, is, uh, this is why this example is, 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 is very, a, very beautiful. It's kind of uh, a... It really highlights all of that in a very simple model. A, now, a, a, so I've, I've uh, a, gotten these uh, Majorana zero modes as, uh, a, a, as uh, a zero modes at the, at the vortex cores of a, of a Carl P, a P plus IP superconductor. A, it, it turns out that you can actually get them even in, in a one-dimensional system. Okay, so uh, if you take a, a, a one-dimensional P-wave superconductor, uh, at the ends of that, uh, uh, of that system, you'll actually get uh, the same phenomenon happening. Okay, so uh, uh, you'll actually get uh, two zero modes. Uh, okay, and uh, this, this is an uh, a, in, uh, a, a observation by uh, a Kitaev. Okay, the paper is from uh, 2003, but uh, the uh, observation is much earlier. Uh, okay, and uh, the, the, the reason why that's, a, that's, that's a, a very important observation is that it turns out that, that uh, to realize exp a, a, the system experimentally, it's actually easier to do it in a, in a, in a one-dimensional setup. And that's the setup that's, uh, there's, mo there's uh, growing evidence that that's actually being, been uh, realized a, a, in experiments. So um, a, let, me, let me just uh, 
spend a little bit of time uh, talking about this, uh, this case, and uh, I'll mention the uh, experiments. Uh, okay, so uh, solving this is actually very easy using what we've done for the, for the 2D case. So let me write uh, a, 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 a Hamiltonian. Okay, so uh, it's just a 1D uh, version of the Hamiltonian we already wrote. Okay, so there's a hopping, there's some uh, chemical potential, a, and then there's a, there's a pairing term, but now there's only uh, one, one spatial direction. Okay, so it's simpler. Okay, so uh, a, a, now we can more or less repeat the same steps we did before. Okay, we write uh, a, a two by two matrix in, in uh, a K space. A, a, so I'm skipping a few steps. Let me just write for you the spectrum. Okay, you can more or less read, read this off from the a, steps we, di we did for the, for the 2D case. So uh, a, a spectrum would look like this. Squared plus delta squared sine squared of k. OK, so uh, uh, the picture that goes along with this uh, is the following. So a, uh, OK, this is k, and this is uh, a, a, a epsilon k. You see that the uh, spectrum is gapped. Uh, unless actually mu uh, is equal to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, plus or minus 2t. Okay, then the, the uh, gap would be zero, either at, at, at uh, k equals zero or k equals pi. Okay, so uh, uh, once again, we'll have two, two um, uh, types of spectra. If mu is uh, bigger than 2t, the spectrum would, uh, would look like this. Okay, if uh, mu is less than 2t, We'll have a spectrum that looks like that. Okay, it should use a different color. Okay, so this is mu a, a, a less than two t. Okay, and uh, a, a, and uh, a, the uh, a, a intermediate case for for mu exactly equal to two t. What we'll get is a is a spectrum that uh, crosses zero, okay, either at k equals zero or at k equals pi. You can see it from here. Okay, so uh, uh, this again suggests that uh, as, a, as a function of mu, uh, we actually have two, uh, two, two phases. Okay, for mu between minus 2t and 2t, uh, there's one phase, and for the rest, or maybe at least two phases. Okay, and uh, a once again, I'll argue that these uh, a, 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 a gap closings are not a, 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 a accidental. They're a actually topological transitions between two top, a topologically distinct phases. Okay, so uh, this phase where, where mu is uh, kind of within the bandwidth, within the uh, a, a, the uh, a bandwidth of the problem with no a pairing, this is the, this is the trivial phase. This is the topological phase. Okay, this is a, a, a also a known as the weak pairing phase. Okay, and uh, a, a outside, this would be the a trivial phase. A, and the same here. Okay, and this is also known as a strong pairing. Okay, and um, a, Basically, the, the, um, the, the fact that uh, this is a topological phase and there's a, there's a zero mode at the, at the boundaries, you can derive exactly in the same way that we did for the, uh, uh, for the 2D case. Okay, so you can basically go to the continuum limit. Um, uh, uh, you can uh, neglect the k squared term uh, relative to the constant. And then this, this becomes, again, the uh, uh, jacob rebi problem. Um, uh, okay, so, so that's, that's one one way to see that there is actually a, a zero energy solution. So we consider again a configuration like this. Okay, so this is mu of x, it's a function of x, and mu changes sign. 
Okay, and uh, a, you can, you can uh, this, uh, this really goes along the same lines we did for the 2D case. There's uh, a Jacob Rebi zero mode here, but here there's no angular momentum. Okay, it really is uh, an isolated zero mode. Um, Right. So, so now, um, uh, so um, uh, what what we actually have here, right? So, if you think about this uh, this kind of P-wave uh, wire, uh, so it's um, it's a one D system uh, with a with a finite gap to any sort of excitation. The uh, uh, the ground state is twofold degenerate. Okay. And uh, if you think about it a little bit, what what's what's the nature actually of this twofold degeneracy? So there are two of these Majorana zero modes at the ends. Gamma one and gamma two. Okay, so uh, a, the uh, a twofold degeneracy corresponds to the two eigenvalues of these two zero modes. A, okay, so this uh, a, this uh, a, a operator, since gamma one and gamma two square to one, this operator actually squares to one. So it's uh, a, a eigenvalues are, are either plus or minus one. And uh, a, a, what's actually the physical origin of this ground state degeneracy? So, um, uh, um, right, so uh, um, uh, these two states are actually distinct by their total fermion parity. Okay, so the, the way to see that is simple. Re uh, remember that the uh, a particle number in the system is not conserved, but the parity of that number is conserved. Okay, so because uh, um, if you take psi and the Hamiltonian to minus psi, the Hamiltonian is uh, a, a invariant under that. Uh, or you can say the system is coupled to, a, to an external superconductor, and the superconductor can put in a, a electrons from the outside, but it, it can only put them in pairs at low energy. Okay, so uh, a, a parity is a good quantum number. Okay, and uh, uh, the point is that uh, these two states actually differ by the, their parity. Okay, so if I, uh, if I want to go between these two states, the way to do that is, would be to act on this uh, on the state by the uh, um, the operator we called f dagger, okay, where f dagger was gamma one minus i gamma two, and since th this is a, this uh, um, um, this uh, a operator is a, is a fermionic operator, it either adds one electron or takes away one electron. It changes the parity uh, of the of the state. Okay, so th these two states physically have a different uh, uh, overall fermion parity. Okay, and uh, Parity is a good quantum number here, so every eigenstate can be labeled by, labeled by its parity. Um, now, uh, the magic here is that the two ground states uh, have opposite parity, but nevertheless, they're degenerate, okay, or, or a, 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 a almost degenerate up to an exponential correction in the, in the size of the system. But this also gives you some intuition as to why this uh, degeneracy is actually stable uh, uh, against any local perturbation, okay, or why, why it's actually hard to observe this this kind of ground state degeneracy. Okay, the, the reason is that uh, the, um, a, the thing that, that distinguishes these two, op these two states is actually the overall fermion parity of the system. Okay, so uh, um, a, the, the overall parity is a non-local property. To actually measure it, you have to take a, you can say, take a snapshot of the wave function and, uh, um, and uh, uh, see how many electrons are there and uh, see if that number is even or odd. So that's not a local property. If you measure any, any property like the density somewhere, uh, somewhere around here, okay, that's not going to tell you anything about the parity, the overall fermion parity in the state. So, um, um, uh, right, so, so this, is, this is why this ground state uh, uh, degeneracy is a, is a, is a non-local property. And it's actually, uh, you, you, it, it also means in particular that you can't lift it by adding any local perturbation to the, to the Hamiltonian. Okay, so uh, um, right, so uh, 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 let me say uh, some words about the experiments. Uh, okay, so uh, briefly, and uh, and then probably I'll talk about uh, non-abelian statistics next next time. Okay, so uh, uh, right, so so uh, 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 in in the last uh, um, uh, four f five four years. Uh, uh, this, uh, there's uh, good evidence that this, uh, this phase, this uh, topological phase of uh, 1D uh, P-wave superconductor was actually realized experimentally. Okay, it's, it's not beyond question whether we are seeing the right phase there, but, uh, but I think there's better and better evidence. 
Um, so uh, I'll, I'll just say in a word, how do you do that? Uh, okay, so uh, um, what you need essentially is a, is a model of a, of a spinless superconductor. Okay, and the question is how do you, where do you find a spinless uh, uh, superconductor? Um, because uh, electrons actually have spin. So, um, right, so what, do, what you obviously need to do is to apply a magnetic field. Okay, so, uh, uh, so the way this, this, these things are realized is actually that there's a, a uh, quantum wire. So there's a semiconducting wire. Okay, and uh, uh, the semiconductor by itself is not superconducting. Okay, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's like a 1D electron gas, but it's uh, a it's, uh, proximity coupled to a superconductor. Okay, so uh, uh, you can imagine that there's some uh, uh, thin superconducting substrate. Uh, okay, so this, this would be a superconductor. And the new versions, they're, they're, they're actually a very thin uh, sort of coating of superconductor on this semiconducting wire. And, uh, and now there's a, there's a big magnetic field which is applied in some direction. Okay, so, uh, a, so a clearly the two, two, of the two uh, ingredients to realize this phase are actually to have superconductivity and to have a uh, large magnetic field applied. Okay, but um, a, it turns out that's not enough. Okay, and you can sort of understand why that's, that's, not, that's not enough because, um, a, right, so if you just polarized all the electrons in the quantum wire, you really would realize the model of uh, a, a, a spinless electrons, but uh, a, the superconductor is a conventional superconductor. It's a, it's a paired state of spin up and spin down electrons. Okay, so, so uh, that's not gonna work. You're not gonna get this term uh, that we wrote before. Okay, so uh, basically pairing between same electron, um, same spin electrons. Okay, so it turns out, and this was really the, the breakthrough in this, a, that uh, a, the third ingredient that you need is actually spin orbit coupling. Okay, so uh, spin orbit a, coupling. So that needs to be strong in this quantum wire. And uh, what that does essentially is it, uh, a, it locks the uh, a, a spin of the electron to its momentum. And then when you apply a magnetic field, a, the, 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 the a, a spins can't, but, uh, but uh, they uh, don't actually become completely parallel to each other. Okay, so, so uh, by combining these three ingredients, you can actually uh, realize this phase as a matter of principle. Okay, so this was uh, pointed out by uh, a, a Yuval a Horeg and uh, a company, a, and at the same time by uh, Roman a. Lutchin. A. Lutchin. Okay, both of them at uh, 2011. Okay, and uh, a, very soon this was uh, a, a, this kind of setup is it was uh, a realized a, an experiment. A, a, okay, in uh, a, a, a quantum wires, and uh, what what people actually um, a measured is uh, you basically tried to contact this uh, quantum wire to a metallic lead. Okay, apply a, a small voltage between these two systems, and uh, a, and uh, a. a a measure uh, differential um, a, a conductance between this uh, a metal and the uh, a, a, the a superconductor, which is which is say grounded. Okay, and uh, what what you're supposed to see. This is the IDV, and this is uh, a, a voltage. Okay, so if uh, if this was in the trivial phase, there would just be a gap. Okay, so the spectrum would uh, maybe look like this. But if this is in the uh, topological phase, this boundary here has a zero mode, has a fermionic zero mode. So you can actually uh, a, a inject electrons into the system at, at zero energy cost. So at, at zero a energy bias, okay, there would be a zero bias conductance peak here. Okay, and uh, a, as a function of uh, parameters like magnetic field, chemical potential, you, can, a, you should be able to induce a uh, transition between the topological and trivial phase where uh, this gap, okay, this is the bulk gap, delta where that closes reopens and after it uh, reopens you should see this uh, zero bias conductance peak okay now uh, a, this the subtlety comes because the in in in, in, uh, in these hybrid uh, a, a normal superconducting systems there are many different reasons to get zero bias peaks so uh, the uh, a interpretation of these experiments is uh, somewhat subtle 
but uh, um, uh, right, but there's more and more evidence that this is actually the right thing. Okay, for uh, for instance, in a finite wire, you should have two of these zero modes, each at every end, and if the if the length of the wire is finite, these two should split a, a, a by an, by a, from zero energy by an, by an uh, a amount which is exponential in the length of the wire. And there's some evidence that that indeed happens. Okay, so uh, right, so that's a that's a very brief. Uh, description of the experiments. These are still a, a, a ongoing, but uh, it looks like these phases are really becoming uh, a, a reality now. Okay, so uh, we can really uh, a, a engineer this topological phase a, in, a, in a condensed matter system. Okay, so um, right, so um, um, I, I want to talk about non-abelian uh, uh, non statistics. Um, I'll just, uh, okay, probably won't go get very far now. I'll just uh, mostly just pose the problem and continue next time. Okay, so. Uh, okay, so, uh, right, so, so, uh, a we saw that uh, a, a, a vortices, for instance, in a, in a, in a P plus IP superconductor, or the edges of a 1D P wave superconductor, actually carry these uh, Majorana zero modes. So they, they, have a, 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 they, they share at least one property with what we described as uh, a, a quasi-particles in a, a non-abelian topologically ordered state. Namely, a, they carry these zero modes. And uh, what we'll get as actually is that the, the, uh, in, the, in the presence of, of many of these zero modes, so uh, either if you have many vortices in a P-wave superconductor or if you have uh, many of these wires, the ground state degeneracy actually grows exponentially with the number of these zero modes. Okay, so that reminds us of the property of non-abelian particles. And uh, uh, the question is whether they also share the non-abelian statistics that uh, these, these things are supposed to have. Okay, so the kind of system that we have in mind is either a 2D uh, a, a P plus IP superconductor, um, okay, with many vortices in it. Okay, so suppose we have n vortices. Okay, so uh, a, 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 we have a, a, a n, n vortices in the interior. There, these could be, uh, if you like, n over two vortices and n over two uh, anti vortices. It doesn't really matter. Okay, or we just have. Uh, n over two of these P wave wires deposited on our, on our superconductor. Okay, and each one carries a pair of these uh, zero modes. Okay, so uh, a, there n, a, a, there's there a, a, a n over two P wave wires. Okay, and uh, a, a, each one of the vortices or the ends of the wires would carry one of these uh, Majorana zero modes. Okay, gamma one, gamma two, Dot, 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 all the way to gamma, um, uh, to gamma n, okay, gamma one, gamma two, and so forth, uh, gamma n minus one and gamma, uh, gamma n. Okay, so uh, uh, we can ask what's the what's the uh, uh, degeneracy of the of the ground state in each of these uh, uh, configurations, and um, uh, to answer that, we just uh, use the fact that these are actually zero modes. Okay, so we do the same as before. So uh, we can construct a, a complex fermions. Okay, so we uh, can construct an a operator Fj. Right, right, yes, yeah. And uh, yeah, so, so um, um, once again, I'm, I'm kind of uh, imagining the boundary is far away, so I can essentially forget about it. Okay, if I wanted to do this uh, more carefully, I would consider a geometry that has no boundaries, and I don't need to worry about the boundaries. Right. Um, yeah. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. So. So. Uh, yeah. So. Um, um, uh, so that's that's a that's a that's a good question, right? So before I talked a lot about what happens at the boundary. So so, but if you go, if you step back and think about it, right? So there's a vortex somewhere here. It has a vortex core. Now the physics is all local, okay? So so uh, 
I, I go in the vicinity of this vortex and I just solve the equations there. Okay, so there's a gap. Everything decays exponentially into the bulk. If I find any subgap state, it has to decay exponentially into the bulk. This would still have its zero mode. It doesn't matter actually what happens at the boundary. Okay, now at the boundary, other things would happen. It really depends on whether there is a boundary, what is size. But uh, if these vortices are far away from the boundary, it really doesn't matter. Okay, so that's, that's a crucial point here. Right, so uh, a, yeah, so I'm, I'm uh, going to define as before. Okay, so uh, a, I'm, I'm going to define a, a, a n over two a complex fermions uh, that are a, a defined like this. Okay, so from every pair, and I, I have to, to uh, choose some some way to pair them. That's actually arbitrary. But for a, every pair of Majorana's, a, a Majorana zero modes, I can define a complex fermion. And uh, a, a, that complex fermion can either be occupied or not. Okay, so each one of these fermions, I can define an a, a occupation number, a, a, a nj, which is fj dagger fj. So that's going to be either, either 0 or 1. Okay, so that means that the, the overall number of, of uh, states in my, in my uh, a low energy a, a, a subspace is uh, a, actually going to be a 2 to the power n over 2. Okay, so a, it actually grows exponentially with the number of these zero modes. Okay, so it grows like uh, actually square root of 2 to the power of the number of zero modes. So a, this is exactly the property that we wanted for a non-abelian quasi-particle in a, in, a, in a topologically ordered state. Okay, so uh, we wanted the, uh, a, a, the number of states of uh, degenerate states in the presence of n quasi-particles to grow exponentially with the number of, uh, of quasi-particles. And uh, a, the, a, 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 this number is called the uh, quantum dimension. Okay, so uh, a, a of, of the particular type of quasi-particle, which here is, uh, a, okay, we, we, we think of the edge, the, there's the end of the wire, and here is the vortex. So the, uh, whatever object that carries the zero mode. Okay, so, so uh, it bears a lot of uh, similarity to what we describe should be the properties of uh, topologically ordered a uh, non-abelian phase. However, it's very different also, okay, as actually Subir mentioned uh, uh, yesterday. Okay, so, so um, uh, uh, these are not actually point-like quasi-particles. Okay, the, the, in, in this case, these are vortices. Okay, and, and the, the vortices in a superfluid are not point-like object. They have... Uh, a, a very uh, long-range um, current flow patterns, and they have long-range forces uh, uh, acting between them. In this case, they're not point-like particles at all. They're just the physical ends of the wire. Okay, so uh, these are similar to, but different from actual non-abelian quasi-particles. Uh, uh, okay, they actually share some of the same properties. There's a, the, there is a, 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 a phase, which is a a, 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 a true a topologically ordered phase which, which has quasi-particles that carry precisely these kind of zero modes. Okay, it's not just, it's just not this system. It's a different uh, Hamiltonian. For instance, the Mourid state of the fractional quantum Hall state is, is, an, is an example of that. Okay, but uh, you can still ask, well, I mean, let's try to exploit this uh, similarity and ask, is there actually non-abelian statistics as we define it uh, also for these objects? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. Right. So. So. Yeah. So it's a. Um, it's a little bit subtle. It really depends on uh, what exactly you do. If you. Th this is a two D system. If you think about the physical electromagnetic gauge field. Okay. So that actually lives in three spatial dimensions, not in two. Okay. So you can do that. That is the correct description of a 2D superconductor, but that still won't quite qualify, okay? So the trouble is that it's still gapless, for instance. Um, what you really need to do is to do what you're saying to couple the system to a gauge field, but really restrict the gauge field to two spatial dimensions, okay? And then you'll get a, a true topologically ordered state which, which, where the vortices have carried these zero modes. Okay, so, uh, right, so, uh, um, uh, what about non-abelian non statistics? Okay, so what, what, is that, what does that mean? Uh, okay, so what, what that means is um, the following. Uh, we have our, our 2 to the power n over 2 
ground states in the presence of these vortices, say, let's, let's, uh, let's think for a moment about the 2D case that's kind of easier to picture. Okay, and uh, uh, what we need, what we want to do is uh, to, to, uh, to uh, apply some unitary operation on this Herbert space. Okay, so we start from some state, we want to rotate it in some, in some way. Okay, and uh, a, 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 a non abelian statistics means that if we take two of these vortices and just uh, exchange them, okay, so the, uh, a, the configuration of, of these uh, a vortices it goes back to itself. So uh, the Hilbert space is the same. I can compare the Hilbert space of the initial configuration and the final one, but uh, that doesn't mean that the state of the system has gone back to itself. Okay, so this operation would correspond to some unitary matrix because if, if these are two uh, vortices, one, or one and two, this operation would correspond to some unitary matrix acting on, the, uh, a, a, on this uh, low energy Hilbert space. It's some unitary, which is uh, two to the power n over two by two to the power n over two. Okay, and uh, a, the special thing that I'm looking for, okay, is uh, a, I, I want this operation to depend only on the topology of this uh, trajectory and not on the geometry. Okay, so uh, what I like ideally is that even if I deform this uh, trajectory a little bit, this matrix actually won't change. Now, a, a, I, I know already that for this particular example, this can't possibly quite happen. Okay, so uh, these, uh, these two vortices actually interact by, by uh, a, a long range forces. So, there's, a, 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 so the, there's, the, there's gonna be some dynamical phase that would depend on the actual path. It would actually depend also even on the time it takes me to uh, make this operation. Okay, so, uh, a, but, uh, a, I can still ask whether the, the matrix itself, okay, so uh, this means that there's some global phase of this that I can't really control that would depend on details, but I can still ask whether the matrix a, a depends only on the topology and not, not the uh, a geometry of the, of the path. Okay, and this, this actually would turn out to be the case a, here. Okay, so, so it's uh, the uh, global phase is not well defined in, in, the, in the case of a P-wave a, a superconductor, but the matrix is. Okay, so uh, yeah, so maybe I should just uh, stop here.